You retired, resigned, or sacked? I resigned. So you resigned voluntarily? Yeah, okay. You're no longer in public service. Uh, I resigned from the Uganda Police Force and uh, I'm in the public service, but not in current occupation. Department of Corporate Planning Strategy. Hmm? Department of Corporate Planning Strategy, Parliamentary uh, Service Commission. Department of Corporate Corporate Planning Strategy. Planning Strategy. Hmm. So, in nutshell, you were appointed by public service. Yes, Council. So, why are you still in service of police at Parliament here? What was your full, full responsibility? Uh, I was the Division of Police Commander, uh, Parliamentary Police. The? Division of Police Commander, Parliamentary Police. <coughs> Was the request about you coming in your capacity division commander or uh, I have uh, I have two invitations. One the request was to do what? What was the request all about? What were you requested to do? Uh, the request was uh, uh, to come out with a footage of the chambers and lobbies on the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th, November, 2023. I mean 2022, sorry. That was all? Yes, please and also inviting me to appear before the committee uh, on, on, the, on the 29th, no, on the 13th of December, 2022, uh, to relay that footage, which was under request. Let me be specific. <clears throat> Were you in any way requested to investigate the conduct of the Honorable Zake? Yes. Uh, the request was uh, to provide the CCTV footage of the chamber and lobbies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2022, and of particular interest the section is where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the house. Put it, I want to put it differently. Were you in any way requested to investigate conduct or misconduct on the part of the Honorable Zake? I was requested to provide a CCTV footage. 
my of question the is in respect to investigation. Yes or no? When, when you are uh, requested to provide a CCTV footage, it also involves the investigations. So you conducted the investigations against the Honorable Zak? Yes or no? No, I provided the footage. Did you conduct investigations? No, I didn't conduct investigations. You did not. <clears throat> so the footage you presented. You have no finding about the conduct of the Honorable Zak. Uh, we have the findings. We have the findings as... Do you have findings? Let me yes. Ask. Uh, I have the findings on the report. I actually in the form on of the, the conduct report. of the Honorable Zak. Yeah, in the form of the report. You've just said you did not conduct investigations. How did you arrive at in findings without investigations? Uh, when you requested to make a CCTV footage, ultimately you come up with a report. And there is no report without findings. Yes, Mr. Gaba. Can you confirm that the request made to you had no specific allegation against the Honorable Zaki. Yeah, the, the request which was made uh, was talking about uh, when the Honorable Francis Zaki was making a submission on the floor of the house on the 29th of November, 2022. We would like to follow this conversation, the request which was made in the letters, the invitations. The invitation of seven. Just read it, then we know what you're talking about. Mr. Gaba, read the invitations, both of them. <clears throat> uh, invitation for a meeting with a committee on rules, privileges, and display. That is the letter dated when? of December 2022, yes, addressed to me. Uh, the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline is inquiring into a matter of the alleged misconduct and misbehavior by Honorable Francis Zake, MP Mitiana Municipality, during the plenary sitting of Tuesday 29th November 2022, which was referred to it by the House. The committee has deemed it necessary to review the CCTV footages of the chamber and the robbies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2022. Of particular interest are the sections where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the house. I have been directed by the committee to invite you for a meeting on Tuesday, 13th December 2022 at 11 in the committee room 408, 4th floor, North Wing, Parliament Buildings, during which you'll be required to present the above-mentioned CCTV footages and to aid the committee in scrutinizing the same. Please note that the Honorable Zaki Francis has been invited for the meeting and he has a right to cross-examine you on the matter if he so wishes. For any further inquiries on the matter, please contact the undersigned on 0782-551330, uh, signed by Agatha Akankunda for Kilakut Parliament. Read the second one. <clears throat> the second one is dated 8th November 2023. The reference. Uh, AB199 stroke 288, stroke 01. Uh, Mr. Gaba Stephen, Parliament of Uganda, Parliamentary Buildings, uh, meeting with the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline on the inquiry into allegations of misconduct 
and misbehavior against Honorable Francis Zake, MP, Mitiana Municipality. The Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline held a meeting today, the Wednesday 8th of November 2023, where it interacted with witnesses in the above captioned matter. During the meeting, the, meet, uh, the committee directed that you appear before it to respond to any inquiries that Honorable Francis Dake may raise on your submission to the committee in the meeting of Tuesday, 13th December 2022, as then the Division Police Command of Parliamentary Police Division. This is therefore is to invite you to appear before the committee on Thursday, 9th November 2023 at 11 in training suit, room 413D, post row, North Wing, Parliamentary Buildings. Uh, for any further clarification on the matter, please contact the under signed on 7825513330, uh, signed Agatha Kankunda for Direct Parliament. No other invitations I have, Honorable Chair. So the specific question relating to those invitations. How did you understand the task charged on you by the committee in regards to the misconduct and misbehavior? Uh, I based I myself, I myself on, uh, on uh, the letter dated 7th December 2022, uh, where the committee deemed it necessary to review the CCTV footages of the chamber and rubies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2022, and of particular interest, the sections where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the house. So I base myself on, on that aspect of that date uh, to inform my uh, CCTV, CCTV technicians to come up with the CCTV footage. When did you get the CCTV footage from your team? Uh, I got uh, I got the CCTV footage on the 12th of December, uh, 2022. It was your first time to also scrutinize it, to watch it. Yeah, that well, I, uh, yeah, that day I, I watched it uh, after receiving it from my uh, technocrats. You did the analysis yourself. I didn't do the analysis myself. It so is you my watched technicians it. Uh, who did the analysis. So when you watched it, what did you do yourself? On twelve. Uh, when I watched it, I informed my CCTV uh, analysts uh, to prepare themselves to, pre I mean, to present it on the date on which it was requested. So you, on your own, you did not make any analysis? Uh, of course, I, I read the report, but of course... Uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying on 12th, when you watched it, you did not yourself make any analysis. But, but uh, I'm, also, not, I'm not an analysis. Uh, you were given the report, the analysis report, a year ago, dated 12th of December, and the signature is there. And this report, you have it. And it's the only one which the committee has. Yes, yes Chair, we are dealing, we know what Kutosi did but we are dealing with this particular witness before we come to Kotos. We are coming to Kotos. You see, if you are talking about document analysis and the one the committee has, is this one, we don't want anything which is outside, which we don't have. What we have is this one, and we forwarded it to you. Chair, I was winding up with this particular witness because Ali Aroni said he made a report. He said himself was tasked to do investigations. We are trying to interrogate him on the investigations he conducted himself. Okay, proceed. 
You said you made a report. It is my analysis. Did you make a report yourself? I didn't make a report. The report was made by my analyst and then presented to me. Did you make a report of any of your findings as the person who was tasked with investigations? No, I didn't make a report. You have no report? The report I have uh -huh. here is okay. presented to me it's okay. as, as a tasking officer. So, actually, let me sum it, sum it up this way. All you did is to receive a report from Kutosi, and for you as the DPC, you did not conduct any investigation. As simple as that. I acted as a tasking officer. You cannot task uh, an officer to do a task on your behalf, but then again you go about uh, investigating it. Okay, fine. You task and then you receive the feedback. All right, Chair, let's deal with the, ta the person who was tasked. He, this was just a tasking officer. Okay, yeah, before the tasking which you presented, Kutos Paul, Paul, your officer. Yeah, he's one of my police officers. He's one of the police officers. Yes, sir. Whom does he report to? Whom did he report to? Who, whom was he reporting to at that time? Uh, he reports to the in charge uh, CCTV, and then the in charge CCTV is here, reports to me. Okay. So you are the overall police commander? Yes, Honor. Get the particulars here. Mr. Mwanika Nikoras, SP Mwanika Nikoras. Mwanika. Did you go through this report? Yeah, I went through it. Okay. This report is addressed to who? The report is addressed to me as the division police commander. It is addressed to you? Yes, Honorable. Okay. Kutosi uh, Paul what was the nature of your task I didn't uh, task I didn't task Mr. Kutosi Paul as I said there is an in charge of that uh, facility so I, I tasked the in charge and uh, on my Later, I received from the clerk, I have a minute, saying the in-charge data center. Provide the footage as per this request and inform the analysts to appear before the committee on the 13th of December 2022 uh, to present the same report. Then I sign. Say it again for our record. To the in-charge uh, data center, Provide the footage as per this request and inform the analysts to appear before the committee on the 13th of December 2022 to present the same footage. Then I signed. Colleagues, do you have any question for the Mr. Gaba? It's clear. Okay. Next, thank you for coming, Mr. Gaba. Welcome, Honorable. Sorry? Most you, welcome. No, just one second. Uh. Chair, uh, Mr. Gaba talk, uh, said that uh, he's having a current position. He's doing now. I would love to say, to confirm that with an ID, the current ID he's having now. Do you have one? An identification? I haven't got one yet. So, how are we going to... I wanted an ID, an identification. Okay, we shall, we are investigative body, we shall find that the parliamentary commission is our commission. We shall find out whether Mr. Gaba is this. Okay, did you say you needed Mr. Kutosi? 
Mr. Kuto, Mr. Gaba, you are discharged. Thank you, Honourable. Mr. Kutosi. Yes, Honourable, Mr. Kutosi. <coughs> Mr. Kutos. From Indeja University? From? Indeja University. <clears throat> I also hold the Diploma in Computer Science. I also hold the Diploma in Computer Science from the same university. A, a degree from Indeja in Computer Science. Certificate in Video Analytics. Video. Analytics. From, from Uptake Computer School. From? Uptake Computer School. <coughs> Uptake is from which country? It's from India. Hmm? India. India. But affiliated here. Which, which year did you get this? It was 20, 2011, 2021, sorry, huh? 2021. 2021. Yes. I also have it from, um, from uh, Uganda Police Innovation Center, hmm? IT Innovation Center from Uganda Police Uganda. IT Innovation Center. Yeah, from Police. Okay. Yeah. Which year is that? Still 2021. 2021. 2021. Yes. <clears throat> and for how long have you been in the service of police? Quite 25 years. Hmm? 25 years. 25 years. And your current assignment? Currently, I'm a CCTV analyst with the Parliament, Parliament, Police, Police here at Parliament. Since when? I came here in 2012, 2022. Hmm? 2022. What is your rank in police? I'm a corporal. Yes. With that kind of education you are claiming to possess. Yeah, but uh, council. How is that relevant, this proceedings? Yeah. The, the professional qualification has given to you and so on. Please. You are overruled on that question. Yes, Corporal Kutos. Yes, Honorable. Who is your immediate supervisor? My immediate supervisor currently is Mr. Mwanika Nicholas. Yes? Is Mr. Mwanika Nicholas, who is currently here with me. Mwanika Nicholas. In regards to this particular matter, do you recall the date you did the examination, the analysis of the CCTV? Yes, Council. Uh, 
I received these letters on 9th, uh, December 2022. It was addressed to me by my in charge. Hmm? It was addressed to me by my in charge uh, to handle and prepare a presentation to the CCTV footage on the particular case, that particular case. So uh, when did you conduct the analysis? I conducted this, it was on the 10th, 10th of December 2022. 10th December 2022. Why didn't you make a report? To, because from the record here, I see you did not make any report to your immediate supervisor. Why? This letter. Why didn't you make one to your supervisor? Chair, this letter was addressed from the DPC to my immediate supervisor. And uh, here, even I put a minute when you read the, my, my report, I've referenced this letter to the minute, as I said. Uh, Chair, I would like, I would request you to read the background of my letter. Anyway, let me take you specifically to the issues you raised no, in your report. Uh, we, we don't want a hanging record because we are going to base the earlier on that I don't turn it into a dialogue. So if, okay. he, if he makes a vague answer, I leave it at that. I remember that was the guidance. Yes, but eventually, mm -hmm. of course, we shall seek more clarification because we don't want a vagueness also. As, as the people responsible for this process. But you leave, you leave it as vague as that. Proceed with your question. Because earlier alone I was guided to make submissions on those vague answers. Uh, <coughs> Corporal Kutos. Yes, sir. On this analysis you made, How many were you? Uh, chair, in the analysis, we have a team of analysis. <clears throat> so in this team, we all sit. We retrieve the footage as a team. We analyze it and come up with the report. And our report, actually, these are findings of our interview. So, I was not alone. I sat with my team. As you see, Chair, when you look at this letter, it's uh, addressed to me. Council counsel says don't volunteer answers, just answer the question. Yes. And we'll so how many were you? I have a team of three other analysts. Who and who? I have a Sikho Muhammad. I have Florence Akum, and also have Narubo Christian. Okay. So the opinion you rendered in this particular report was corrective? Chair, I was the lead analyst in this case. So the objective I gave... You have answered the question. ...were correct. Chair, I would wish to interrogate the issue further. Was it a collective opinion? It was independent and personal opinion. Okay. Wonderful. Independent and personal opinion. Now, going by your independent and personal opinion, I'll take you to page two. Page two. Page two.
through interviews with just read five one. Read that read it loud. Five one. Uh, through interviews with some police officers and other staff, our technical team established that the Honorable Zake was the one seen in the footage, seemingly exhibiting violent contract on the floor of parliament. Do you own that as a personal opinion or it's an opinion of your team? It's a personal opinion. Personal opinion, wonderful. Two and related to that particular matter. Honorable Bozake was the one seen in the footage seemingly exhibiting violent conduct. Seemingly. Are you certain or you have doubts? True to what? It is true. He was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct. What do you mean seemingly? Appearing. Appearing. From that particular footage you watched, where he was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct, and from the video footage you were watching, was the speaker in the chair? The speaker was in the chair. The speaker was in the chair. And you have that footage where you are asserting that he was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct with the speaker in the chair. Do you have it? The chair, we have the footage. You have it? Yesterday, we played it. And you still have it here. Where you are seeing both the speaker and the, in the chair and the and Honorable Zake seemingly making violent. Chair, this report does not talk about the speaker. It talks about the particular person who was actually seemingly exhibiting the violence. So in this case, we are zeroing on Honorable Zake to see his conduct in the plenary. So it does not look at the speaker, his actions, but we only looked at the particular person. That is what it was okay. What I mean, in chair. Okay, we shall break it down further. Those seeming violent, that seeming violent conduct, what was he exactly doing, which you are terming as by being seemingly violent? What was he doing? Chair, <coughs> Chair, I would like to tell you, this committee, that uh, in our profession, we really look at the footage. There are two kinds of types of footage. The one which has, actually has both, a, both a language and the one which is actually having that the spoken or written language. But for this case, I was looking at the one with the body language. Actually, his movement clearly shows that the Honorable Zaki was violent. Did he beat up the speaker? Yes or no? Chair, allow me to explain to the Honorable. I mean, the Honorable. No, I want to take you one by one. Did he beat up the speaker? I want to. Explain to Honorable. Uh -uh. Uh, Chair, if I may be allowed, because I'm going to break down these particular acts. Did he beat up? I want to, these questions. I want yes or no. Did he beat up the speaker? No. Did he insult the speaker? We did not hear the words. This was not verbal. Did he insult the speaker? Yes, no. It was not verbal, so we don't hear the voice. Did he beat up any member? What we saw? Did he beat up any member? No. Did he hold any weapon? No. Did he in any way kick anything? Yes. He kicked what? 
Slapping. Slapping. Several times. No, I'm talking about kicking. Did he kick? He did not kick. He, you are saying he slapped. The rostrum. He slapped. He's seen slapping the rostrum. Exactly. You saw that in the video. It was there. Can we be taken there to the video? We watch that particular part, Chair. Okay. We, we are going to have opportunity to review that and the evidence and make conclusions. Okay. All right. Fine, Chair. If I may proceed. Okay. Can, can you, for emphasis sake, there was no heating of the rostrum, but you are saying slapping. Get the video off. Let's continue with the question. Uh, Chair. I believe when someone slips you, these are two English terms. You can say he has hit me on the cheek, on the cheek, or he has slapped me. So I, this is one of the English terms that I use. They describe the hitting of the of the rostrum. I said he was slapped. He slapped the he, I mean the, the rostrum, meaning he hit the rostrum. Hitting. It's <laughs> anger. <laughs> okay. Let, let, let's go to the conclusion on page five. Let's go to the conclusion. You are using it. There are a couple of questions here. You are saying your team, our technical team in compliance with other technical ethical and procedural requirements concluded that the act of still I would ask you that Honorable Zake was violent. What do you understand by the word violence? Chair, this is how I understand violence mm. from the English dictionary. Mm. Violence means what? When you say a hostile behavior, when someone has exhibits a hostile behavior, it is that amounts to violence. So in this, so in other words, the honorable Zaki was hostile. He had a hostile behavior, sir. Okay. Hostile against who? Chair. He was hostile to the house. Oh, hostile to the house. Somebody is hostile in this room. Who is having that for? Please don't exhibit hostile behavior. <laughs> did, did he exhibit any intent to hurt anyone? Chair. Yeah. As I do I say. Did he exhibit? Honorable Park, I want to explain. Yes. Because if I just put the answer, you might not understand. Allow me to explain, Chair. Uh, you see, he was using physical force. By using physical force to hit the rostrum, even his uh, visual appearance, he was aggressive. Because we don't look at the voice. Mr. Chair, you allow Mr. to tell this to Mr. Lukwago. We are using only images to describe what is happening. So by finally looking at this... No, let me cut you short. He was aggressive against who? Hitting the rostrum. He was aggressive. By hitting the rostrum, swinging hands, even, even there when you look at the footage, his fellow honorables came to come him. So when you looked at that, we saw that the Honorable Zanke was aggressive. Okay, fine. I want to conclude my questions on this by looking at the caveat you put there in that conclusion. Look at that caveat. Read it for him. That 
our technical team in compliance with the other technical, ethical, and procedural requirements concluded that the act of Honorable Zaka was violent. But, this is the caveat I wanted to read for you. Further analysis by interviewing the person that were near him to get any information that can enhance the footage in order to form a complete narrative of a violent misconduct. Wonderful. So your opinion was inconclusive. Without interviewing the people who were near him, Chair. you cannot conclusively make a finding that actually was violent. Chair, this allow me to explain to Mr. Uh, explain to the committee. And the committee, actually, Mr. Rukwaku and the committee. Uh, we did not comprehensively conclude that the Honorable Zaki was violent. Reason? It needs a corporate, I mean, collective what? Uh, evidence. We all wanted to get a person who was in the house. Because here we say that Zaki was violent but required further analysis by interviewing a person that was near him to get information. So we needed to inquire from the person who was near him, like those honorables who come to him, who come to him, and also the sergeant at arms, because he also went under. It's okay, we do what you are supposed to do. This committee is going to have opportunity to talk to people who are in the chambers. So just do what you, are, what you did. The rest you leave it to us. Wonderful. We did not conclusively conclude that Honorable Zake was violent unless other people around him were interviewed. Did you interview any of the people as police? As police, did you interview anyone? Sir, this record, as I said, I'm a professional. I don't do CIG work. Mine is IT. So I did not interview anybody in this particular case. And this is your personal opinion? I already said it, Honorable. OK. No further question. We take at it up from there. When you say personal opinion, what do you mean? And the reason why I'm asking, is this report a personal opinion or a police report? It is a, a, a CCTV report. Yeah? It's a CCTV is report. Is it an official report? Exactly. So what do you mean when you say personal to is an official report? I, I, I was meaning I'm an analyst. And when I'm doing an analysis, I base on the video content. So I mean that this report was independent and we base on the video content of the, the video. The word you are using seems to be contradicting the document we have. This document is not a personal document. I see it clearly. It is Uganda Parliamentary Police Division report. Two, I also see you, your signature. You, you signed it as a CC. So how can you call this a personal report? I, I thought, Chair, that would be the judgment of this committee. You, you, you want us to leave the witness with the hanging questions and vagueness, and the one party takes advantage of it? Oh, come on. That is the we, don't, we, we don't do this, please. We are investigating to come to the crux of the matter. We can't do that. I mean, we will be failing in our duty, and we can't do that. Ours is to find out what exactly happened. Colleagues, we are tasked to find out what exactly happened. And we are inquiring. We are not sitting here as a criminal court. I repeat, we are not sitting here as a criminal court where you have to wait for the prosecutor and the defense make submission and you base on it. Can you answer the question, please? Chair, yes, sir, just a bit. Uh, you are persistent to say this is not an investigation. That it is not an investigation? No, no, rather against the Honorable Zake. That what? That it's not an investigation against the Honorable Zake. That's how we understood you, Chair. 
please, 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 hold up, Rukwaku. Then why are we here? Why, why, why did you come here in the first place? We, we, we understood you to say... Just a minute. Do you have communication from us? Miss, your client has communication from this committee. In writing. What did it say? Chair, when we raised this issue at the beginning, to break it down the particulars of what is being investigated, because if you are investigating an individual, there must be specific allegations and there must no, be no, particular no, 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 the rules pro here provide that when the chair is speaking, you listen to him. And that's what the rules said. We said, and I repeat, Onobozake is not here as an accused in, in terms of criminal cases. So to breach of the rules of procedure and our code of conduct. <coughs> The first thing we must do is to establish the facts of what exactly happened. And there is no prosecutor who is prosecuting Honobozake here. We are trying to find out what, what happened. And if you find out that nothing breached the rules, we shall report that actually there was no rule breached by the Honorable Zake. The subject is actually Honorable Zake. That's why we asked him at the beginning in writing, you have right even to cross-examine people who are testifying here. Two, you even have a right to have a lawyer, because that's your constitutional right. And I think that clearly settles this issue. May I come in just for clarity purposes? I think, Chair. I'm seeking for clarification Moment. further. OK, can you let us I, have, I have understood excuse. Let's have our colleague first. Yes, a chair from the word go, you emphasized that these are not criminal proceedings. I didn't hear you say that these are not investigations against you. You just said these are not criminal proceedings where we expect a charge sheet, we expect a safety prosecutor, we expect this and the other. In my view, we are proceeding well. This is an inquiry. And we have to get all the information, all the clarifications. Okay, there is nothing like fighting here and as a committee we have got a right chair if something is not clear to get the information like what you're saying for instance the witness is saying that uh, our team established this when you look at the report findings now as a committee i think we need information from him to clarify was this done as a team or you did this as an individual i, I think uh, i don't see any prejudice in that particular question Anyway, I, I think we have made that clear quite long that judicial proceedings. Please, judicial proceedings. I don't know how many times I repeat this. We are a quasi judicial administrative you know organ of parliament. The only thing we have to do is to make sure that the Tenets of the Constitution of fair, of fair hearing are adhered to, to the latter. And that we have done. And that will always do. That we have done. And that will always do. Tenets of the Constitution and tenets of a fair hearing. However, however, for us to leave things hanging, we can't do that. I mean, we can't waste public resources, sit here, and say, well, we didn't find that out because it was not said. That's why all the witnesses coming, I told you, are our witnesses. Can you answer the question, sir? Okay. Yes, Your Chair. Chair, this is, a, it was a collective report. Answer the question. The question is, you talked about personal. That's what is confusing us. You said personal. It's a teamwork. Personal. What you have given an official report and you have signed it in the official capacity. Sir, why I said it's personal, I took responsibility as being the head analyst to sign that document. After findings, I own it as a head analyst. That's what you mean by personal? Exactly. 
that you took responsibility. Exactly. Okay. Colleagues, do you have any other question? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. In your submission, when they asked you, you said, um, this letter was addressed to me and you quoted the date. And when we are asked, this letter was addressed to my in church. Was that letter addressed to two people? This letter was addressed to my in church. It was addressed from DPC to my in church and also instructed me to carry on the technical work. With the Can you get us those instructions? Where is that letter? And those instructions. Chairs, he forwards it to you for clarity. You have a letter addressed to you, you have instructions on the letter addressed to you. If you are reading the letter. The letter was addressed to DPC as a divisional commander, but you also have the head CCTV. So it was written from TPC to head CCTV. Then the head CCTV instructs the technical team, which is me and my group. So as head analyst, I took responsibility to receive the letter from what my... What the instructions you have? Exactly. What do they say? The instruction says, in charge CCTV analyst, in charge CCTV analyst handle and prepare presentation of the CCTV footage on this case. So okay. for Kirayte, there is a note written to you, addressed to you on the letter that was addressed to the in church. It has a second minute. A minute. Exactly. Okay. Read it. The second minute, the second minute says, in charge CCTV analyst handle and prepare a presentation of the CCTV footage on this case. No, that's what you were saying. And the third, the third minute, I received it. It's understood, Chair, because he was referring to, as if there were several letters he was talking about. It's understood. And uh, for purposes of our record, this is a letter dated 7th December 2022. And, uh, Tosi? Uh, we had thought this would take us 30 minutes, it is taking us more than two hours, but we have no choice. Do you, do you have any other person on the record to, for cross-examination? Monday at uh, 11 o'clock, this particular one. But we now have uh, another matter which we have to start on. Chair. In my earlier communication to the committee, I did next week to be excluded because I intend to be out of the country on official duties. I'm heading a delegation to Netherlands about a particular project in Kampala here. Delegation in KCC, National Physical Planning Board, and a couple of others to interface with the Norwegian government of a reconstruction of the old taxi park. And it's going to take five days. That was my request in earlier communication, Chair. Colleagues, uh, I've, I've been trying to, to do a little bit of consultation with the colleagues who are here. Sorry to, to disrupt you, but we need a small, a 
a small meeting and it will take not more than five minutes. Uh, if, if you can give us just five minutes, because I have already found but it's not about the chair alone. Uh, I need to get other members involved in this consultation. So can we stand over this just for five minutes? And then we take that decision about the, the, the timelines and, uh, and we conclude. Uh, and we don't have, uh, unfortunately, a lobby where you can sit. Actually, parliamentary staff don't come back. You might even exhibit violent conduct here. Five other witnesses, and they are sergeant at arms, the two clerk at table, I'll uh, ask the clerk to communicate that also in writing to today. But at least. Take a leave. You indicated these are witnesses of the committee, and indeed we are entirely agree. But uh, they are those we deem it's as if once these ones are, it will be on the discretion of the committee to decide whether they are necessary or not. But for us, they, we see there are some witnesses who are left out, which we consider to be very, very important for the justice of this matter to be done. Uh, so, you, you reply to the committee. First of all, bring it to our attention. If you think it's necessary, mm -hmm. but if you think it is a witness you would want through us, you have to apply to us. Mm -hmm. And then we see the relevance of that witness. No, no, ch 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 we are following your ruling and guidance that this is an inquiry. Yes. Constitution, no defense. That these are our witnesses, and these are witnesses of the other side. I said all witnesses can only come here when we have agreed and sanctioned, all of them, because they are ours. If you have any witness you have in mind whom you think is what? Is relevant. You apply to us, then we can we will take a decision whether that witness is necessary or not. To move this committee through you at this stage, that certain witnesses whom we consider to be vital for this case be also summoned, and this is why at this stage, so that we don't we open, we open. You you let us know, and we take a decision. We wanted to do it now, Chair. Go ahead. Oh, Professor, thank you. Chair, uh, from the testimony of Kutos, he has indicated that the people who were around the Honorable Zaki need to be interviewed. And the police indicated they never interviewed them. They never interrogated them. And from their, the, that report of Kutos, there are names that are specifically mentioned. They mention a number of MPs, including the Honorable Nabeshi and a couple of others who are surrounding the Honorable Zaki. We consider them to be relevant, Chair, those MPs. Because even some of those names are appearing in this report. Honorable Nabeshi specifically appears here and some others. So we can generate the list of those who are close to him so that the investigation is conclusive. Kuto said their investigation was not conclusive. Mm -hmm. So that is number one, they can set number one. Two, Chair, we have read 
the statement of the speaker over and over again, preceding the directive that the matter be forwarded to the committee. And Chair, when you look at the statement of the speaker here, it's our considered opinion. There are a couple of things which need to be substantiated by the speaker here. One, Chair, it's not that clear from the statement of the speaker. What is it that the Honorable Zake did which required him to be subjected to a disciplinary action? From the statement it is here, it is detailed. The speaker states, a number, I write say, a couple of things here in this statement, which may be... And in the interest, like you, you have kept... Uh, of the right to a fair hearing, I'm sorry. You have emphasized the tenets of the right to a fair hearing. And I remember alluded to that fact in the ruling of the Honorable Zake in the Constitutional Court, where the lead judgment cited Article 28, the one to get to know exactly the gist of the investigations and the allegations leveled against them. Now, in this particular one, there are a couple of things the speaker is talking about that the Honorable Zake, for example, missed 10 sittings without his permission. Is it a matter of investigation so that he prepares a defense? Because he says the commitment to that, I started it without Honorable Zake. Honorable Zake has not been in this house for over 10 sittings. He has not been here without my permission. If I go on the answer, I can prove it on the record but I have never spoken about him because he's a brother. You leave him as a colleague. Maybe he's, he's blah, blah. So is that part of the acts of misconduct for the Honorable Zake missing the tennis? Do you think that's an issue which was referred here? He said all this and said on that, no. For, for disciplinary Our action. understanding is different. No. Is, our understanding, because of reading the answer and the evidence away.